First Reformed is written and directed by Paul Schrader and stars Ethan Hawke as Pastor Toller. Mary, a young pregnant woman that attends his church, played by Amanda Seyfried, asks Toller to speak with her husband about some doubts he is having about bringing a child into a world that he feels we as a people are destroying. This is a film where a lot can be given away pretty easily, so I'll try to refrain from being too descriptive with the storyline. One thing that I will say is that writer-director Paul Schrader is best known for penning the screenplay for one of the best films ever made, Taxi Driver, and First Reformed at times feels like it is borrowing bits and pieces from his masterpiece with its themes and overall feel. This is a bleak, slow-building character study about a man that is crumbling, both mentally and physically, under the weight of his past, his faith, and the current state of the world. The film features a lot of narration as Toller reads aloud excerpts from his journal, a new exercise he has recently taken up as a form of prayer, a way to be honest with himself. As a series of events unfold leading up to the 250th anniversary of his historic church, the entries begin to reveal the pain that is hiding underneath the surface. The first things that grabbed my attention were the lack of music and the cinematography. The opening credits of white type on a black screen are silent, almost uncomfortably so. Music is used sparingly and doesn't make an appearance outside of choir singing until the second half of the film. The score is very atmospheric, essentially just tones, and it's used at very specific times for very specific reasons. Schrader isn't afraid of silence and he uses it to help build uneasiness as well as allowing the film to feel less cinematic, less like a movie. There are times where the film will cut to an image of something impactful. In any other film, the score would be used to enhance how you're supposed to feel during this scene, worried, scared, or excited. The music would swell or drown out at these types of reveals. In First Reformed, the film instead remains silent. Without the film telling me how I should feel, it took a second for me to register what it was I was actually seeing, and when I did, it made the impact of the moment all the more shocking. The incredible photography adds to the unique vision as well. The film was shot in an almost square 1.37 to 1 aspect ratio. The wider the aspect ratio, the more cinematic a film will feel. I found the boxy ratio made many shots feel like a home movie, giving off the idea that these were real people with real emotions dealing with real problems. Every shot is meticulously framed using lots of symmetry and very little camera movement. There are very few cuts, many scenes being long takes from a single angle. All of this not only creates a more personal experience allowing you to better connect with the characters, but also builds tension. When the camera does move, you know that it isn't for an arbitrary reason. The camera remaining static on a tripod while the tension builds in the narrative, as Toller slips further into darkness, is in contrast to what you would expect, and this helped to fill me with anxiety. You never quite know what's going on, where the film is headed, and the fear of the unknown matched with how calm the cinematography remains as Toller's world is falling apart really got to me. About halfway through the movie, you begin to understand where the film is leading to in a general sense, and the suspense begins to build. I was on the edge of my seat at times, wondering what would happen next. The deliberate pace allows for the tension to reach peak levels and enables the people on screen to have ample time for characterization. Ethan Hawke is fantastic as the lead. He has a cheer cheerful, quiet front, but little jabs begin to eat away at him. His historic church has more or less been reduced to a glorified gift shop, a super church in the area drawing everyone away. He is asked questions about faith, and you can sense that he may no longer believe the answers he is giving. His responses to tourists and colleagues sound like lines he has memorized and not his true feelings. His descent is subtle and nuanced, natural and captivating. Early on, the words he writes in his journal don't reflect what we as the audience see, Toller unwilling to admit the truth to himself. This is the best work I've seen from him. Everyone else is great as well, including Amanda Seyfried and Cedric the Entertainer in a strictly dramatic role as the head of the megachurch. The dialogue they recite feels like lines the people would actually say, and I had no trouble believing everyone in their actions. Despite how brilliant I found many of Schrader's direction choices to be, my only complaints are due to a few decisions that he made. For the first half hour, I was convinced that Amanda Seyfried was miscast. I am a fan of hers and I know that she can act, as I mentioned earlier, she is strong here, but she didn't take her character to a level that I felt it was necessary for her to reach in a couple of emotional scenes. This made me needlessly suspicious of her motives and was a distraction that could have been avoided if she was given better direction with her character. Also, although I appreciated the slow build of the pacing, at times the film is plotting and long-winded, perhaps driving an idea home for far longer than was needed. Myself, as well as many of the other people in the theater, 
I was in became restless and fidgety for stretches of the film that kept trying to make a point that was already made. In my opinion, 10 to 15 minutes could have been cut. Lastly, there's a scene that I'll just call the magic carpet ride scene that features very noticeable green screen and some low resolution drone shots. I liked the direction it was going and it started off very effectively for me, but the execution of the idea took me out of the movie briefly. The ending is going to divide audiences. Most of the people in my theater laughed as the credits began to roll. One young lady in my role threw her hands into the air and attempted to stifle her gasps of disapproval. I didn't laugh or become upset. I was too busy being confused. After much thought, I've come to an opinion on the very ambiguous ending, and I think that it works beautifully. Be warned, though, if it wasn't made obvious yet, this is a very art house film. It uses lots of implications instead of exposition. It favors characters over set pieces. It is subtle and metaphorical. It is what I look for in a film and what some others may despise. Paul Schrader has crafted a very effective, thought-provoking character study featuring one of the best performances I've seen this year in Mr. Hawk. The film subverts your expectations, it doesn't head in directions you may be expecting, and it showcases marvelous direction to build anxiety. I can see a second viewing perhaps becoming a bit of a chore at times due to the film hammering ideas home and hanging too long onto topics, but First Reformed is another great film from A24 that was emotionally manipulative, beautifully shot, and full of captivating moments of suspense. 8 out of 10.